When it's spring again, I'll bring again golf balls from Amsterdam. Hi, on behalf of Golf Passport, welcome to Holland, where they don't have many mountains, but they do have lots of great golf courses and a lot of other good things besides. So, hop on a bike and follow me. When it's spring again, I'll bring again golf balls from Amsterdam. Holland, otherwise known as the Netherlands, is a mere wedge over the water from the UK and a tap-in from most of Northern Europe. Amsterdam is the cultural capital and one of the world's most eclectic, electric and exciting cities. So, this is Holland, land of bicycles, boats, and birdies? Too few golfers realise that Holland has some of the best courses on the continent. Anyway, we started our tour at the International, which is the newest and a very impressive addition to a little country that boasts over 200 courses. Only 5 minutes from Schiphol Airport and 15 from the centre of Amsterdam, the International is a haven for both wildlife and golfers eager to stretch their legs and enjoy their first fairway fix. You can be on the first tee of this Ian Woosnam design course just a couple of minutes after whizzing through passport control. Well that's the first round done. We could now just drive up the road 10 minutes to catch a plane home. We're not going to do that. We're going to stay and play another four rounds here in Holland. Join us. Holland offers a surprisingly wide range of courses and the next we played is, well, delightfully Dutch. We're the first here, but we'll do it properly, we'll put our ball in the chute. A hundred and thirty yards to the pin, so it's probably three-quarter wedge, or in Dutch, three-quarter wedge. Not everyone at Zansi dislikes the water. In fact, the wildlife appear to be thriving in this delightful Dutch idyll. The new section of Zansi Golf Club is comparatively modern and offers a nice contrast to the tree-lined original nine. But we were glad to return to the old section. Yes, delightfully Dutch just about sums it up. Just two minutes from Zanzi Gold Club and we were in windmill country. Zanzi Schans is a small village on the banks of the Zaan River, complete with tidy little Dutch houses and genuine working windmills. In the 17th and 18th century, thousands of windmills powered the Dutch economy, not just pumping water, but providing the energy for sawmills, dye mills, oil mills and, of course, flour mills. If you thought wind farms were a modern phenomena, think again. Those behind me are comfortably over 300 years old. Stability is very important in golf, and these new spikeless golf shoes could be the answer. Back in Amsterdam, the only slopes we found were on the bridges over canals. The billions of bikes are quite bewildering. As well as wheels, there's lots more going round in Amsterdam. There are no green jackets, but the masters in the Rijksmuseum are every bit as glorious as Augusta, especially the Rembrandts. Van Gogh lived in Amsterdam for a short while, and there's a museum dedicated to his work. But we opted for something altogether more edifying, a tour around the old Heineken brewery. Birch Hollif consists of three loops of nine, the original two playing through the forest and the newest nine over more open, gently undulating ground. It's tough and tight through the tree-lined loops, the new section is roomier and more forgiving.
golf passport only gets invited to the very best parties at the very smartest places. And here we are at the Royal Palace near Appledore to celebrate the start of the Herring Festival. Because of the cold weather, the plankton didn't come in and the herring aren't as fat as they normally should be at this time of year, but that's not going to get in the way of a good party. So, I don't know what they say in Holland, up your herring. Very good. Kenema is a good old fashioned style club, but not in the way some members choose to arrive. The course was first created in 1910 and was rather a rudimentary affair. Harry Colt was commissioned to lay out a proper 18 holes in 1927, and Dutch course architect Frank Pennick had more holes in the mid-1980s. Today, Kenemar presents 27 excellent links holes that have regularly hosted the Dutch Open. It's not all dunes, but the turf still offers the same excellent sandy firmness, and the greens are all undulating and immaculate. If you like Lynx golf, you'll love Kenema. Our final round of the trip was at La Forsa, just south of Amsterdam. An American style course designed by Robert Trent Jones Jr. It weaves through tall trees and around a few lakes. It's wonderful and offers several miraculous greens with seemingly magnetic holes. So that's our roundup of golf in the Netherlands, a small country that punches well above its weight when it comes to quality golf. The Golf Road Warriors uncover another rare golf getaway with a host of off course activities amidst the beautiful beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel in sunny southwest Florida. Let's meet the Golf Road Warriors. I'm Hal Phillips, I'm a golf warrior, and I'm proud. I'm Brian McCallan. I'm a golf road warrior, and I'm pooped. Dave White, golf road warrior. Most interesting. Tom Bedell, golf road warrior. Is it over already? Our base for this Gulf Coast golfing fiesta was the captivating Hyatt Regency Coconut Point Resort and Spa in beautiful Bonita Springs, an exceptional resort Extremely comfortable and relaxed, with easy access to one of the finest courses in this area, Raptor Bay. Besides being an excellent, compelling test at every turn, it's an Audubon International Gold Signature Sanctuary, the highest environmental designation given to any golf course, and you're sure to enjoy a flyby by some of its many residents. Oh, it's going to go too. That is right on it. Our next port of call, after a more than hearty repast at the Lighthouse Cafe on Sanibel Island, was the Dunes Golf and Tennis Club. We needed more than one breakfast ball to tackle the Dunes tight tests, and as short as this course appears on the card, it's a leviathan, and it requires skill and precision to stay away from Davy Jones's locker. It wasn't just the birds that were making a splash here. Out of the numerous outstanding courses in this area, Old Corkscrew Golf Club and nearby Estero lingers in the memory long after the round. This is a standout Jack Nicholas signature design. The quality golf course, clearly one of the most testing tracks in Southwest Florida. Golf in the Fort Myers and Sandville area doesn't always have to be serious, as the Golf Road Warriors discover at Smuggler's Cove Adventure Golf in Fort Myers Beach. Oh, thank you very much. But too much golf can make Jack a dull boy, 
and the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel offer a myriad of off-course distractions. Firstly, there's always the stunning natural beauty of this place. Just take a drive or stroll along one of the many powdery white sand beaches. Or join a happy throng on a dolphin cruise from Captiva Island. Getting back to terra firma, one attraction you cannot miss is the Edison and Ford Winter Estates in downtown Fort Myers. These innovators of the industrial era invented so many modern conveniences, and it's perhaps telling that they discovered Fort Myers as their winter escape. When it comes to dining, inevitably, you'll find your way to the bubble room. It's a fun food factory, chock full of childhood memories and portions of overwhelming proportion. But there are dozens of exceptional restaurants throughout this area and we tried our level best to sample as many as possible. The beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel is an ideal base for a golfing break. One certainly that the golf road warriors thoroughly enjoyed. It's a complete destination, with a vast array of great golf choices, combined with lots to see and do. We heartily recommend you come and discover it for yourself. Until recently, people didn't think about Turkey as a golf destination. Today, it's one of the most talked about golf travel topics. Back in the early 1990s, the Turkish government decided to convert a stretch of scrub forest skirting the Mediterranean Sea into a golfing mecca. And now it's one of Europe's most popular golf holiday destinations. One thing you'll notice from the start, Turkish people don't make any effort whatsoever when it comes to service. They don't have to. It comes completely naturally to them. It's part of their culture. And there's such a wealth of culture to encounter here in the Antalya area. Well, here we are in the ancient city of Perge. It's mostly Roman and well, it obviously had everything. It had shops, it had a sports arena, had a theatre, it had bars, swimming pools, everything except one vital element that was missing. No golf course. And that, we may assume, was the downfall of Perge. Nearby Spendos offers a remarkable semicircular amphitheatre, considered one of the best preserved examples from the ancient world. J57. I think I'm up there somewhere. And it's worth continuing up the hill to the village of Spendos and the spectacular Roman aqueduct. If the heat of Antalya is too much, escape to one of the many cool shady waterfalls that surround the city. Rivers tumble from the high Taurus mountains and leap out in turquoise splendour. Some of the locals like to get rather too close to the action. Antalya's old harbour is a popular spot to stroll around, go for a sail on one of the many pleasure boats or simply relax and watch the world go by. There are some exceptional restaurants surrounding the harbour. So what about the golf? It's as good as you'll find anywhere on the European continent, possibly better. There are signature courses by Sir Nick Faldo, Colin Montgomery, Perry Dye and Dave Thomas, but really there's not one in the entire area that disappoints. Antalya Golf Club offers two splendid 18-hole tracks. The PGA Sultan is surely one of the best on the coast. 
The Montgomery recently hosted the inaugural Turkish Airlines Open, the first European tour event to be staged in Turkey. It's a magnificent track that weaves through high pines and luscious lakes. Right on the shore of the Mediterranean lies Lycia Lynx, one of our favourites. Another on the favourites list might be Carrier Golf Club, designed by Australia's five times Open champion Peter Thompson. The Surrey style Heathland is reminiscent of Wentworth's Sunningdale or Walton Heath. Although I can't ever see Sunningdale or Walton Heath adding floodlights for night golf. Right, well, here we are at the Cornelia Resort. We've got three courses designed by Nick Faldo. Sir Nick Faldo. Uh, there's the Princes, the Queens and the Kings. And a right royal flush they are too. Splendid courses, every one. And there's nothing wrong with the old guard. Courses that appeared way back in the dim and distant 1990s. Gloria Hotels and Resorts offers 45 holes of golf. The Glen Eagles of Turkey, with the old course at its heart. And the younger sibling, the new, presenting a sporty challenge. National Golf Club opened in 1994. And, as they like to say, the first and still the best. National really is a superb layout from start to finish. A tight, demanding test calling on you to work your way through each hole. There's an old fashioned flavour about the layout and even National's clubhouse is a traditional chip off the old colonial block. There's a handful of shorter courses, ideal for a more leisurely outing, all of which are superb. Hi, I'm Roberto Borgatti, and welcome to the resort at Longbow Key Club, where I'll be guiding you through golf's unique challenges to help you improve and maximize your game, so you can achieve a swing you can trust. What's important right from the start is getting a good warm-up. It starts here, getting some blood pumping. First step is getting your heart rate up a little, getting the body warmed up and awake. Then we'll take it to the range for a few swings. Most gyms have a medicine ball, so it's an easy way to warm up your swing motion before you get on the range. So just some nice easy swings. And you can rehearse the strokes too. So the body's feeling good, and now it's time to warm up the game. I always like to start with a few pitches and chips, just to get the rhythm going, comfortable with the motion. Then move on to the full swings. After your warm up in the gym and on the driving range, it's important to start with great posture. So you really want to be nice, stand nice and tall and feel like you're lengthening your spine, your stomach in, your buttocks tucked in, and your chest nice and wide. And you always want to hinge from the hips, not hunch. So always hinge from the hips when you set up. And then we'll do a second hinge away from the target, from the hips as well. And then you'll be ready to swing. Now another key element is knowing how far to stand away from the ball. Should you have your arms hanging real close to your body? Or should you be fully extended and reaching? Where you want to have your arms is where centrifugal force naturally sends them during a swing. So if you make a practice swing of the same intensity that you would make for a normal swing and stop around impact, you'll feel where your arms want to go through the swing and that's where you want to set up. And there you have it. So you won't be making adjustments mid-swing to try to find the ball. You always want to set up where the arms will naturally go. Our next key really focuses on the swing itself. Most importantly, on creating power and efficiency in coiling your body properly. Now in making a turn, most people unfortunately move their left knee toward their right. 
and slide on their backswing. What you want to do instead, and a key is really in the leg action, is have your left knee kick toward your left foot and that allows your hips to rotate and the upper body to all coil all on one axis. And it looks like this. All players need a precision short game, and the essence to a precision short game is the rhythm of your stroke. You need to have your arms hanging close to your body, and you want to think of the stroke as tick tock. And so if you make your stroke to that rhythm, you'll find yourself much more consistent with solid contact and control. And it looks like this. Tick. I'm a firm believer in utilizing technology to give us greater insights into a golfer's swing. Here's LPGA Tour professional Miriam Nagel and I using V1 software on an iPad, giving us very useful, immediate feedback. Yoga not only builds strength and flexibility, but creates a greater sense of calm and focus, which is great for golf and every other aspect of your life, followed by a wonderful brunch. Yummy in the tummy. Life is good, my friends, and even better here at the resort at Longboat Key Club. Look forward to seeing you soon. You can learn more with my DVD and ebook series, A Swing You Can Trust, where you'll find simple, comprehensive lessons to help you achieve a swing you can trust. Welcome to Southeast Ireland. We've just arrived for what is going to be an absolutely spectacular week of golf. The weather is stunning. I've not even brought a pair of waterproofs or a sweater. It's going to be that good. On our trip, we'll be visiting beautiful Wexford Town, the medieval Kilkenny City, Carlow Town, and we'll finish up in the historic town of Trim, County Meath. But first, let's arrive in style into Rosslare Port. Just along the coast from Rosslare Harbour, St Helens Bay offers outstanding golf in an idyllic setting. Seaside golf just doesn't get any better than this. Tucked away in the quiet southeast corner of Ireland, St Helens Bay is arguably the sunniest golf course in the country. Just across the bay from Rosslare Harbour, there's Kelly's. Not so much a hotel as a way of life. A family-owned business that dates back to the 19th century, four generations of Kellys have run it. And it's got everything. It's got crazy golf, pool, Ooh, la la. croquet, table tennis, a sea spa, tennis. If all that's too tiring for you, you can enjoy the gardens or simply lie on the beach. Only a few minutes further north is Rosslare Lynx. There's something quite magical about a genuine Lynx and any golfer with a feeling for the game's history and traditions surely appreciates glorious Lynx golf. OK, Johnny, you're the professional here. What's the secret to playing this course? Straight. Straight tee shots. Don't take the corners. When you get into trouble, get it back on the, on the fairway very quickly. You see that this time of the year the course plays very fast. And if you don't play it from the fairway, it's a very tough golf course. Now, it looks rather gold, rather brown. It, is that unusual? It is unusual. This is our best summer in eight years here, our driest summer. Uh, we have a great green keeper here and a great team. 
and their years uh, trying to get this to go back to a Lynx course. Uh, back, back being fast and this is exactly how they see the golf course. It's absolutely beautiful. Our next port of call is the wonderfully historic town of Wexford. The town of Wexford is at the heart of a delightful part of South East Ireland and the Talbot Wexford is at the very heart of town. The Talbot Wexford is renowned for its afternoon teas. Not all tea times are on the golf course, you know. Let's jump in the car again and see what else this wonderful part of Ireland has to offer. During the day, Kilkenny offers all the charm and culture of a fascinating county town. But be prepared for when the sun goes down. That's when things really step up a gear. Well, here we are in downtown Kilkenny and the place is jumping. It's jumping even higher than it would normally. Why? Because Kilkenny beat Waterford in the hurling match. If they'd lost, they'd still be jumping about. But as they won, they're going crazy. Here we are at the 4th of Callan, very reminiscent of the 12th at Augusta, round a main corner. About 150 yards, obviously quite a lot of water at the front, but a real good opportunity for an ace, I think. So, let's have a go. <laughs> Get in the hole! Whoa. Oh, no. A Bogey. <laughs> and he gets a birdie. Following our golf in Callan, we made the short drive to Carlo and wind and dine before a bit of relaxing. Irish style. We met up with Pat Bramley, past captain of Carlo Golf Club, to prepare us for what we were about to receive. It sounds a bit Irish, but apparently, is that right? It's a Lynx course that's a long way from the sea. Yes, and one of the most beautiful ones, I have to say, in Ireland. Then again, I'm biased anyway, because, but it is absolutely beautiful. Every hole is different. There's now two holes in the whole course to say. I mean. Inland Lynx, isn't that a, an oxymoron? This is Carlo, and anything is possible in Carlo. Schlante. 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 Cheers. <laughs> Carlo Golf Club, one of the most interesting inland courses we've come across in a long while. Was it ever by the sea, I wonder? Yes. And on to our final destination. We're now in a place called Trim. What better place to have a haircut? Trim has this classic castle, a powerful symbol of Norman strength at the edge of the Pale, which was a small area of Anglo-Norman influence on Ireland's eastern coast. I'm an Englishman and they brought me to the place where Braveheart was filmed. And now look what they've done to me. Through Trim flows the ever so peaceful River Boyne. The famous Battle of the Boyne was fought in 1690 between Catholic King James and Protestant King William. You're never alone for long in an Irish pub. Our final retreat on this great golf trip was Knightsbrook Golf and Spa Resort, about 30 miles west of Dublin. A magnificent hotel with a stunning course we absolutely loved. Knightsbrook does a top-notch breakfast to set you up for the day's golf. Yes. Knightsbrook is a truly beautiful parkland course with inviting fairways, gorgeous greens and a generous sprinkling of water hazards. Knightsbrook recently hosted the Junior Solheim Cup and is consistently voted in Ireland's top 100 courses, year after year after year. And it's not hard to see why. To book your great value golf break to Ireland,
contact Club Choice. <laughs>